RF man here. Today I want to continue my discussion on impedance matching. In my last video we looked at the impedance of the output transformer for a high frequency board. In this video I want to take a look at the input transformer. So what I have set up here is a transformer with a potentiometer. I'm using a potentiometer to basically provide the exact match for this transformer. And then I'm using a trimmer capacitor to compensate for some of the parasitics. So what do I mean by that? Well, this transformer basically has three turns. So the turns ratio is three. Uh, you've heard me say in many of my other videos that the turns ratio squared equals the impedance ratio. Now that's for a conventional transformer like the one you see here. Okay, so three squared is nine. So what would be the ideal perfect impedance match for this transformer if the ratio was perfect and we didn't have any parasitics? Well, it would be 50 divided by nine. So we'd have 5.55 ohms. Let's just call that 5.6. So I've got a potentiometer there marked at 5.6 ohms and I have a perfect match between the input, which is 50 ohms from my VNA. Let's go to the VNA here, and you can see I'm on port one, so I'm measuring S11. And we're gonna concentrate basically on the Smith chart and also on the SWRs. I think that's what most people are interested in for ham radio operation is, is what is my SWRs across the band. So I'm going to focus the discussion primarily on that topic. So you can see we just have it set up, okay, into the transformer. And this is the ideal case, right? So this is a perfect match. I have 50 divided by the impedance ratio of 9. It's 5.6 ohms, okay? So now let's take a look at the results here. Okay, and this is sweeping automatically about every three or four seconds. And we can see on the Smith chart, remember what we said from some of my other videos, that the center of the Smith chart is 50 ohms. So we'd have a, a perfect match, and that would be 50 ohms real part. Okay, and then on the positive half of the Smith chart, we have what? Inductive reactants, and on the bottom half, we have capacitive reactants. So you can see that this is inductive, right? This is one of the inductance curves, inductive reactance curves, okay? And we can see that the parasitic effects of the transformer are more inductive than capacitive. Okay, now let's go down and take a look at the SWRs. I just have to scroll a little bit, okay? And we can see that we do not have a perfect match, okay? We have you know, if we, if we go to the low end, it looks pretty good, okay? And I can read the numbers right off of the chart here. Uh, looks like uh, 1.3, and we go to the, the center, and it looks like 1.66. And then we go to the high end, 30 megahertz, and we're at about 2.3, okay? So we don't have a straight line across the whole band. So what do we, what do, we do? Well, we know that we have some inductive reactants, so we have to add some capacitive reactants to cancel out some of the inductive reactants and try to get the response as flat as we can, try to get the SWRs as flat as we can. Okay, so what I'm gonna to try to do here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the pot. Okay, this is a, a little difficult here uh, with, with uh, just one hand on the screwdriver and the other hand on the on the camera but just bear with me all right well that wasn't working too well so i've got the camera now on a tripod small little tripod so i can use one hand to adjust the trimmer and i have a free hand as well to hold the board and now i can just swing this around to the chart and I think it's going to be a lot more stable that way. Okay, so there's our SWR chart, okay? 
And what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to adjust the trimmer to see if we can compensate and get the SWRs not only flatter but also lower across the band. So we'll go ahead and start to adjust and you can see as it refreshes okay you'll start to see an improvement we'll adjust a little bit more a little bit more just keep going here okay and uh, yeah that, that's that's about as low as it's gonna go uh, if I go past that point it starts to rise up again um, so we've got a significant improvement let's go back and again take a look at the low end so I'm reading 1.25 and let's go to the center of the band around 15 megahertz and I am reading 1.3 let's go to the higher end of the band and we're reading 1.16 so definitely compensating for the parasitic effects of the transformer, which is the inductive reactants of the transformer, um, plus there's some inductance from the wire and from the PC board, etc. Um, we're able to not only flatten the SWRs across the band, but we're able to achieve pretty good performance for a broadband amplifier. Um, I think anybody would be, be happy with that. And you can see that as we went ahead and adjusted the trimmer part, if I go back up now to the Smith chart, you can see we're very, very close to the center of the Smith chart. So what we could basically do is remove the trimmer part, measure the capacitance, and we could put a fixed value capacitor in there. Now, from my experience, it won't be exactly what you measure from the trimmer. Um, you'll have to experiment a little bit, a few picofarads up or down, um, but you'll be able to dial it in and get very good performance. So that's basically impedance matching 101. This is the ideal case. Uh, of course, if we're using a transistor, and I'll go back to the example that I gave with my two meter board okay when we look at the data sheet and we look at the input impedance and we look at the real part and the imaginary part and we calculate z or the magnitude remember we square the real part which is the resistance we square the imaginary part which if memory serves me was capacitive reactance and then we take the square root of the sum of the squares so uh, at that frequency the input impedance was not an exact match of 5.6 ohms. So when you're doing your compensation, you're going to be compensating to try to achieve a, a perfect match. So that might be the real part plus some of the imaginary part needed to achieve the 50 ohms. So that's just the basic overview, um, probably as simple as it gets. I had some questions, I wanted to address those and uh, make a follow-up video and basically demonstrate real-time how to go ahead and match the impedance. So, RF man, thanks.